Hello students. In this video, we're now going to actually show you or tell you what the Pythagorean theorem actually says. In the video after that, we'll then prove it to you that it actually does hold for um, all right angle triangles. And then the video after that, we'll then actually start to find some unknown side lengths using the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem is a statement about right angle triangles and also about squares. So in particular, what we have to do first is look at some terminology. So in every single right angle triangle, there, there are obviously three sides. And the side that's opposite the right angle, which also turns out to be the longest side, is called the hypotenuse. So for this triangle, C is called the hypotenuse. And the other two sides, the two short sides, are called the legs. So the legs are the two short sides that make up the right angle. And the hypotenuse is the longest side, which is also the side opposite the right angle. So why don't you stop the video and just identify the hypotenuse and the legs on the other two triangles. Okay, welcome back. Well, this is, again, not a hard question. The longest side on this triangle, hopefully, fairly obviously, is R. That's also the side opposite the right angle, so R is the hypotenuse. And P and Q are the two sides that make up the right angle, so they're the legs. And on the third triangle, the side opposite the right angle, which is also the longest side, is side A. And therefore, B and C are the two legs. So every right angle triangle has a hypotenuse and two legs. OK, now I'm going to show you something that I think is quite interesting. Something, someone could have discovered this just uh, sitting around in a room that had a tiled floor. So someone's actually drawn this little diagram on the tiled floor. and said, oh, look, at there's a square here drawn on that side of the right angle triangle. And there's also a square of the same size inside that square, which is drawn on the hypotenuse. Now, the interesting thing is, if you look at the square drawn on the other side, which is down here, that has exactly the same area as that plus that plus that plus that because each of these is half of a square, and you put the two halves together, you make one whole square. So the interesting thing about this is the area of the square drawn on the hypotenuse is equal to the area of the two squares drawn on the two legs. Now you might think, well, that's interesting, but it only applies to that uh, special triangle. Well, if you look at this particular triangle, you get something similar. So once again, we have in here a right angled triangle. If you look at the shortest side, one of the legs, that has an area of three by three or nine square units. On the other leg is a square that is four by four or 16 square units. And on the hypotenuse is a five by five square, which has an area of 25 square units. And that same pattern holds for this triangle, that the area of the two squares added together on the two legs adds up to the area of the square on the hypotenuse. And it turns out that can be shown to be true for every right angle triangle. So write this down and draw the diagram in your exercise book, please. The Pythagorean theorem basically says for all right angle triangles, the area of the square on the hypotenuse, which is that area there, is equal to the sum of the areas of the squares on the other two sides. So if I get that area, plus that area and add them together, I always get an answer that's equal to the area of the square on the hypotenuse. Now written in 
algebra, if we call the three sides of the square A, B, and C, then the area of the square on that side is A squared. The area of the square on the other leg is B times B or B squared. And the area of the square on the hypotenuse is C times C or C squared. And here's the Pythagorean theorem written as an algebraic equation. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now that's the one that we'll be using. It's a good idea though to always remember that this comes from the areas of squares on the sides of a right angle triangle. Okay, in the next video, we'll show you, we'll prove to you that this theorem holds for all right angle triangles.